Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to a general basics tutorial for Card Survival Tropical Island. My name is the Neomer, Neomer or just Neo, and I was given the honor from the hardworking developers of the game to be your guide. This video will cover interface description, player stats, the survival guide, exploring, crafting and blueprints, and hydration, nutrition, sleeping and health. Pinned comment below the video will have the timestamps for all of this, so feel free to skip ahead to the part you want to know about. Some of the topics have more detailed videos about them. Find the links in the pinned comment, video description or the game survival guide. Interface description. This is what the game looks like when you start the game and well, just do a tiny bit of exploring. On the top left part of the screen, you can see the menu. Right now, there is only safe and quit option. Moon and suns, you can see, are the persistent currency you earn by doing well in the game and is used to unlock more perks to customize your starting character. Directly below it, you can see the weather and time of the day. Clock is the most useful since you can keep track of night and day cycle. Night is between 20 pm in the evening and 4 am in the morning. Some of the activities are impossible during the night unless you have a light source. In the bottom left part of the screen, you can see some of the player stats. Only important or problematic stats are shown. The rest is hidden to avoid clutter. Most of the screen is covered in the play area. It is divided into three rows. The top row has the location object and the objects which are strongly connected to it and cannot be moved to player inventory. Middle row has the items present at the location which can be freely moved to the player inventory and the bottom row is the player inventory. You move the items between rows by drag and dropping or right clicking on them. You interact with items by drag and dropping one of them on top of another item, location or location object. Some items, objects and locations can also be interacted with by just clicking on them and choosing one of the options available. Most of the things you do have a tooltip describing what you can generally expect to happen and how long it will take. Some of the interactions take no time, some 15 minutes, some 30 and so on. Everything is a multiple of 15 minutes though, making effectively card survival tropical island a turn-based game, where one turn takes 15 minutes and actions take 0, 1, 2, 3 or more turns. Player stats. Player stats are the numeric values which simulate your character and his or hers well-being. There is a lot of them, but the game shows only the important ones. Values are not shown explicit, they are represented by bars of different color, filled by a certain percentage, as well as unique icon to the left of the bar. Some of them you want to be as full as possible, some of them empty, and some of them are best uh, around the middle. To do well, you will need to learn which ones are which and how they interact with each other. Lucky enough, most of them are very intuitive. For example, food, water and weight bar you want as full as possible. Most of the bad things you want empty and they do start empty and invisible. By hovering over the bar, game will give you useful information about it. Next to each bar, there is a trend arrow showing how they will change with passage of time. Arrow pointing downward means they will go towards empty side. Arrow pointing upwards means they are filling up. Minus sign means they will remain where they are. Some of the stats you affect directly by your actions inside the game while the others slowly change over time based on other stats. For example, water meter is easily to fill up by drinking while morale, for example, is harder to influence directly and will go up or down over time depending on how well you are taking care of your character. The survival guide. There is a lot of information about the game mechanics in the survival guide and the chapters are connected with each other by interactive buttons. Here are my suggestions what chapters to start reading when playing the game for the first time. These are A. Hydration Basics More info Temperature 
hydration, coconuts, more info, coconuts part one, and rustic crafts page one. These will cover some important things you want to do on day one. You will learn how to limit water loss by regulating your body temperature, how to make basic tools and how to hydrate using coconut water. Once you're comfortable with these parts, you should look at the following chapters. Hydration, coconuts, more info, part two. Fiber crafts, page one, the introduction here, and then cord and the rope to learn how to make cords. You will need cords for most crafts. Rustic crafts, page two. You will need the axe to reliably get long sticks for the shelter though. And finally, making fire and also cooking, cooking. This should help you learn how to store rain water using coconut bowls how to make a shelter to protect against rain. This one is a bit tricky. You will need to cut down small trees with an axe to get long sticks. To make cords, you will need to extract fiber from coconut husks and combine them. And you will also learn how to cook food and make it safe for consumption. Make sure you do not burn it though. In general, I do advise to check the guide a lot and often whenever you feel like you need to tackle a new mechanic that you did not see yet. For example, when you get wounded, it would be a good time to go and, well, check the first aid part. Basic exploring, crafting and blueprints. You can explore the location by clicking its picture on the top left corner of the play area and choosing to go for a walk option. Some of the items you find can be interacted with to make some rudimentary tools or to gain various resources. Combining two stones will give you a sharpened stone, we already have one, and then you can use the sharpened stone to peel a coconut, make a hole in it, and well, you can also drink it. Some of the craftables you will need to unlock the blueprint first. When you start the game, the most common way to unlock a blueprint will be to find or craft one of its ingredients. So in our example here, we found a heavy stone, and once we found the heavy stone, we unlock the deadfall trap. Once you explore the beach enough time, you will find two new locations, jungle outskirts and rocks. Rocks are a really good place to find some extra stones, but make sure you're not wet while exploring it. And jungle outskirts is a really nice place to find some wood and sticks. You go to these locations by pressing go. They are very similar, I already carried my items here as well. So you explore jungle outskirts by clicking on it and well, press explore. It's not go for a walk, but it basically does the same thing. Once you find some wood, you will unlock the campfire. If you also find six, you will be able to create it. So click on the blueprint, select campfire, press build, drag and drop some wood, sticks. You can see all the materials here and four stones on it. And click the build to actually build it. You can make cords by extracting some fibers from a cotton coconut husks and putting two fibers together to make one cord. This will also unlock some pretty interesting recipes which you can, well, try to put together. They're pretty cool. You can make a hand drill by interacting sharpened stone with some sticks. And you can use hand drill on some dry leaves or some fibers extracted from coconut husks to make some tinder. With tinder you can start the campfire. Once the campfire has been uh, running for a while, you will see this 100% here. That means it has charcoal in it. And well, while the charcoal is hot, you can take embers. Put your embers on top of the wood and give it some time and you're gonna get yourself a nice axe handle. Once some time passes, your wood handle will chill down and you will be able to interact your sharpened stone with it to make an axe. You can use the stone axe to cut down some wood on the location you're at to get some wood and sticks. Wood is really good for the campfire and sticks are useful for some other things. You can also use the stone axe to cut down small trees. You will guarantee to get a long stick out of it which is needed to make the shelter and the splint. Do that a couple more times and you will have yourself free sticks. With free sticks you can make a shelter. 
you will need three sticks. You can find more small trees by exploring. If you don't have a small tree, you will always be guaranteed to find one. You also need two cords. The shelter is built in two steps. First step takes sticks and cords, and the second step takes a bunch of palm fronds. If you don't have enough of the location, well, check the beach, you probably found a bunch exploring at the start of the game. Shelter will protect you against light rain and make you less wet. It will take a little bit to go down though. To conclude this crafting part of the tutorial, I'm just gonna go through blueprints we did not make yet and shortly explain what do they do. You can make a deadfall trap to hunt animals and well, cook and eat them. You can make coconut sandals to protect your feet while exploring. You can make leaf skirt to wear, uh, well, protect your privates. Well, we already have something protecting our privates, so that's probably not a priority. And finally, we have a splint, which helps heal fractures, sprained ankles and wrists, but be careful and don't get hurt in the first place. And finally, seashell necklace. It would be nice to wear one. This one is a bit vague, but it will help boost your morale up. Hydration. Hydration is really important and top priority at the start of the game. Keep your body below hot temperature and drink fluids to avoid dying from thirst. Once the water bar hits zero, that's it, game over, game over man. At the start of the game, useful fluids include coconut water and rain water. Get to coconut water by making a hole inside the coconut. Sharp stone can be made by interacting two stones and will be suitable for this task. The simplest way to collect rainwater is to store it inside coconut halves by clicking on them while the rain is falling. You can fill up one of them or you can fill up the whole stack. Either way, it doesn't take any time. Once the rain stops, water in them will slowly but surely evaporate though, so plan ahead. Check out the hydration part of the survival guide or my water basics tutorial for more information about hydration and water conservation. Nutrition. Being hungry will not kill you, but slowly losing weight until you're just skin and bones will make you a skeleton. Not a very lively one. Rip. A lot of things that you find early game are edible. Make sure you build a campfire first and cook it. You can start the campfire by making a fire craft hand drill tool. And then you interact with it on some dry leaves or some coconut fibers coconut husk fibers to light some tinder. Place the food inside and do something for 30 minutes until it's done. Make sure to take it out so it doesn't burn. Simple rule for starters. If hungry, cook it, eat it. For advanced play, ah, uh, there's way more. Check out nutrition part of the survival guide or my nutrition basics tutorial for more information about nutrition. You can cook the coconuts as well, but first you're gonna have to get them out. You can use a blunt object on a coconut to skip the drilling hole process and remove some meat. After that, proceed to put the meat in the campfire, wait for it to get cooked and then you can eat it. Make sure th your diarrhea meter doesn't go too high up though. Sleeping. Over time your character will get sleepy. It will mostly hurt your morale and you have to go to sleep eventually, so plan around sleeping regularly. Best time to sleep is between 20 and 4 am in the morning, since at that time you're limited by sources of light for your activities. For example, you cannot explore because you cannot carry your campfire with you. Click on a club on the top left corner or shelter, leave bed or some other sleeping accommodation and choose a nap or sleep to fill up your wakefulness bar. We are gonna choose this nap and we don't have any other place to sleep at. Long periods of sleep on rough terrain will cause back pain. Try to sleep more times per day for shorter durations or use aloe vera to limit or remedy the problem. Comfier sleeping arrangements will help as well. Health. Keeping yourself physically and mentally healthy is crucial. Well, if you want to survive for a long time anyway. At the start of the game you should not have a lot of issues as long as you, well, drink enough fluids eat cooked food, sleep enough, avoid being wet and cold for long periods of time. Well, if your clothes is wet, take it off. If you're cold, 
also hang around the shelter that means doing things which are not exploring like you can eat a crab and you will see your uh, your wetness will go down and your temperature will get chilly over time instead of cold and finally don't do stupid things well sooner or later something bad will happen though either by accident or too much curiosity so would that seek demoralized something else check out the first aid or mental well-being parts of the game's survival guide or my health basics tutorial for more information about health this concludes the general basics tutorial it was recorded on version 14 on the update 13 of the game I will try to update it at a reasonable intervals. Check the pinned comments, video description or other links in the survival guide for more information. And feel free to ask anything in the comments, I will be happy to help. Happy survival, Niamar out.